Hello everybody, my name is Christian Gudeman. I'm CTO at Webgate Consulting OK and OpenNTF Chairman. Today I've announced a project called XPage Toolkit and like the most of our projects I have uh, also an uh, example and demo database to show you the capability of the XPage Toolkit. From a historical point, the XPage Toolkit was a collection of things that we think that it's absolutely needed to develop cool and good XPage applications. But um, actually it's more and it does more. And so I will do something I call from right to left. That means I show you uh, things from this right to the left side. So let's start with the RSS feed first. RSS feeds are implemented as a data source or could be used as data source. Sometimes that's very useful when you have um, uh, the possibility to use this as a tiable or source. But as you see here, when I change something, the rendering of the page is uh, very slow and not so responsive because um, based on the JSF lifecycle, the HTTP call to the RSS feed has to be done before the rendering of the page code be finalized. So uh, then we had made a uh, better improvement and say, okay, let's make an RSS uh, UI list control for uh, XPage designers that can be used and make this call asynchronously. So take a look at this point, the RSS UI list control. As you see here, the the call is made asynchronously. That means um, the whole page is rendered and after that an Ajax call um, takes all the data directly from the RSS source. So also by changing, you see what's happening. Uh, the page is fully rendered and then the Ajax calls takes it back. And as I said, for a developer, it's very, very easy to use. So let's go short into the designer to show you that. Here you have this RSS UI list control. You find it under the XPage toolkit part. And the only thing you have to do is you have to define your <clears throat> feed URL and you can change different things but uh, here define the feed URL and, and all works. So next step. Uh, we have on the RSS uh, feeds give you also the control about the custom CSS and styles. So now you see an ugly one. That's why I'm not a front-end or UI designer and you can also customize the HTML that is used in um, in this widget. So the best to understand the concept of this is go to the example database and see how we have implemented here. The example databases is also the best point to to see how we think that you should use the controls. So next, go to XPage Agents. That's something um, that we are very proud of because long running UI actions are um, mostly things that people do annoy when they when you press on a button and then your server has a lot of things to calculate and do not give any response. So, we have inspired by an idea that uh, Philip Rion has published. Uh, we have implemented this long running UI actions and we have also implemented a, a nice UI for this. So I hear, have here an agent that, that counts to uh, some numbers and count it back. When I click on run agent one, so it starts to running and I, I can also, and, and that it makes um, on the back end and it also only takes some updates and I can start also another long-running agent 
and these other agents do it asynchronously and they are two separate threads running inside and they are doing all the changes they should do. So I can also go away from this side, side and they will finish their job as they should. And we have also implemented something that it's a little bit in the experimental mode um, we use it in uh, several custom projects, uh, but um, we call it a replacement for the agent manager. But I will blog and also make some short videos about this uh, later on. So let's go to the One UI tab. The One UI tab um, delivers some missing elements. Uh, if you have a scene on, on connections or other applications this night nice about pages and you think oh I have to do this by myself oh that's that's a little bit hard to do now we have a one UI about page element also and I go to the designer you see it here one UI about page it's also very easy to define it's a drag and drop this about page in there go to all properties and then you can first um, add a marketing claim, add a text, add a title and also into the text there is, is a Dropbox uh, drop area where you can put in your own panel and make all the things um, that you need. And you have a left column and a right column and here on the left column blocks you can add one or more uh, left column blocks and on the right column blocks you can do the same. As you've seen in, in the home page here, uh, we have in this particular case two uh, left blocks and three right column blocks. So, and all will be rendered in the right way. The same uh, way works the welcome box and the One UI tips and as you see here the One UI tips looks not so cool when it's on the on the big screen it's more useful on, on the right hand and the welcome box is also closable and you can do it with session binding that means during the whole session um, this uh, is consistent or you can do it with a data object binding and as I said um, earlier, go into the example database and see how we have done this. So now go to DSS and JSON. DSS stands for Domino Storage Services. And this, it's one of the things uh, that we are using very hard in um, WebGate because it's, it's something about the way we are programming. and here it's only a short explanation about it because um, that needs more than one 10 minute session to understand what we are doing here. But the Domino storage services is, is something that separates the whole storage procedure of Java objects from the business logic. Uh, in a typical end here structure you have the presentation layer mostly here in this part the X page you have the business logic mostly written in uh, Java and you have the storage like uh, a SQL or non-SQL database like, like Domino or DB2 and what we have done is we have separate the storage out that we can only by definition programming the whole storage let, let's see it in the code. Go here to Java section and we are talking about um, contacts here. And what, what I have to do is I have here my, my business object, the contact that implements serializable, that it can be written on the disk during the JSF lifecycle. 
and this contact has some uh, definitions with annotations. First, it has a domino store definition with a form, and it has a primary field class and a primary field key, and a view where uh, all the contacts can be found, uh, sorted uh, by the primary uh, key field. So, as you see here, this store definition says where these objects sh object should be saved. And now when we go down, you see with each member field we have such a domino entity definition. The domino entity definition says um, in which uh, domino field um, this uh, value should be stored. And that's all. We do all this definition and as you see we also can handle lists, lists of string, lists of object, um, that will be all, all stored in the right way. So another typical aspect of our way we are, that we are programming is um, that we make the, uh, the API to the contact available through a contact session facade or a bean. And this bean delivers um, in this example all contacts back. That means it asks the contact storage service to get all contacts. Or it delivers a contact by ID. We need that that we can edit contacts, single contacts, save contact, that we can save a contact Get my context is something special because I can have um, something implemented that calls uh, get all my objects, objects that are, ass are assigned to me based on, on a list of fields. And add observer and remove observer is implemented that I can put um, contacts in the list that I'm observing. So the contact session for SAID is the API that is used by our uh, X page developer to access this. So when we go here to DSS contact, you will find this in the code. You go to the source code, it's a little bit easier to understand. Um, here in the object list source, you see that we are using the contact pin with get all contacts to retrieve all the contacts and in the my contacts um, object list data source we go to the contact pin and say get my contacts so that's the way it works and you may be thinking now oh and what does uh, the contact storage service and you will be surprised contact storage service is very very short because it extends the abstract storage service directly from the XPages toolkit and the only thing that the contact storage service has to define is what type do I deliver and we made all our objects if possible as singleton object and what uh, what things have to be done when I have to create an object. So that's all that is implemented. That means get all my contact, all my objects or get all objects by ID get or implemented in the abstract storage service already. So as you've seen, that's, that's very easy and fast to program um, the business objects. Go back to to the <clears throat> um, example database, you see we have here a, a repeating control embedded that uses our object list data source. And when you see, um, we can sort by last name, by state, by city, by email, and all that is happening without any um, access directly to the uh, storage service or to the backend because they are cached in there. So this object list data source is also something that we have implemented and um, it's a little bit 
cleverer than only the um, extension library object. As I said, it's an object lit status source and it can be rendered as a tabular source and you can it also use in the data view with, with some tricks. I will show this later in another um, example. So, but we can also create, read, update and delete operations made. As you see here, I have Aaron Wooten. When I click on the edit box, I have all um, the elements here. And the thing that, that we now are doing is we accessing the contact object as a xlib object data source. And I can change something here, can save it or can say cancel. Also here, go to the example, see how, how we have done this. And I will lay the blog and make some tutorials about this whole domino storage thing because it's very an interesting way to program a more model driven and separate the tasks out that a, a next page designer can do and that a Java rack can do. And we have, we have also something implemented, some convenience function in the XPT bean. Um, we can now ask XPT being get my groups and roles and we can ask get groups and roles of someone else like my colleague Pete Luder from Webgate Let's say show me all his groups and roles where he's on our development system in there that's very cool and very clever so you have in the runtime you you can um, know where people are or on what groups people depends and on what roles from your application people depends so that's the X page toolkit and I know that that was very very hurry and um, I think each of these tab has uh, over an hour uh, explanation in there so give me the chance that I can explain you all in detail in the next tutorials that we will deliver after the Wednesday event that will come up. Bye!